where I'm going with this with the flow, uh, I was surmising that if we have beta alpha and theta delta, we probably have alpha theta as a borderline state. And depending on which textbook you read, that borderline between alpha and theta is somewhere between seven and eight hertz, depending on the textbook. That also happens to be where the Schumann resonance is at 7.83 hertz. Schumann resonance, the Earth electromagnetic field that is entraining all of us, all living creatures that have a brain, together as a self-organizing symbiotic system of Earth being alive, uh, that's at 7.83 hertz. That's that, in that borderline state between alpha and theta. And then later discoveries with brain science showed definitively that the flow state, the zone, is also associated with the borderline state between alpha and theta. And so the latest album that I've just come out with, The Flow, is centered at 7.5 hertz. Now, I've been experimenting with this now for almost 30 years, so I know it works from a standpoint of anecdotal evidence. But now we have solid PubMed research articles that prove that was also correct. That's the flow state or the zone. It's Tiger Woods uh, hitting a hole in one. When there's 30,000 people crowded around him with cameras poking in his face and 50,000 people watching at home and a hundred, you know, and $20 million or $50 million riding on this next shot. So with all that pressure to bear, he knows how to get into this flow state. He knows how to go into complete focus, step out of his way. Small mind is the one that worries if I'm going to screw up or not and guarantees I'm going to screw up because it's interrupting the flow. I have to have an uninterrupted connection with the flow so that I can look down the field, see where I want the ball to go, look back down at the ball, and under the hood, my quantum computer is making all the necessary calculations of body stance and angle and muscle tension and how hard I'm going to have to hit it, all calculated mathematically, taking into the wind and the deflection and the curve and all the rest, somehow under the hood making all those calculations. My small mind is out of the way, and when it's finished with its calculations, it swings and hits the ball, and it goes way the hell down there, lands 15 feet from the hole, and rolls into the hole. So that's what we're talking about. And that can be in every action of your life. It can be in your job, in your relationships to other people, in your relationship to yourself. It affects how you meditate. It affects how you do anything. Wash the dishes. It's huge, and it's big, and it's in touch with a deeper part of yourself that is in the flow with the universe that's trying to move through me. And why it can't do that effectively is because I'm up here worrying that I'm not gonna make it happen or something. So the science of flow is what we're talking about. And in particular, what happens in the brain as brain activity slows from the relaxing alpha state into the more hypnagogic theta state, the neural network becomes highly attuned. So this is the borderline state we're talking about, which is usually overlooked. Everybody's looking at alpha, and then when it changes to theta, everybody's looking at theta. Nobody's looking at this instantaneous moment when it flips from one to the other. It's almost outside of time, unless you have this natural ability where this is a wider roadway here, where you can actually, in your passage from one to the other, you can stop here and dwell there in that state. And we can make this road wider and wider and wider the more we exercise it with brainwave entrainment. So this becomes a bona fide state that you can go to at will. Easier and easier the more you train it up. Here is an original research article from Psychology, Frontiers of Psychology. EEG correlates of the flow state. A combination of increased frontal theta and moderate frontal central alpha uh, in the mental arith arithmetic task. So they're just showing that you can go into the flow state with any kind of task that requires you to solve a problem of some kind. In this case, mental arith uh, arithmetic problems. Uh, in complex mathematical problem solving, you can also go into the flow state. When you can't bring it up, it is called writer, writer's block or with a composer or a musician like me, we call it our muse. If the muse is not present, the music doesn't flow. In order for the muse to be present, you have to clear the deck in your mind and get out of your own way 
and open the door so the flow, so the muse can flow through you. And your hands magically create music from God knows where. And I've got 90 soundtracks to prove it to me that when I am successful in getting out of my own way, then something magic happens at the keyboard and I'm recording it. And then I can go back to those recordings and I can harvest what's come out. And once again, I go into a flow state where I align different tracks to other tracks and create multi-layered pieces. That's how I make my music. Uh, thanks to modern neuroscience, we now understand all the different neurochemicals that are being associated, uh, released and associated with the flow state. Dopamine. When you first enter the flow, dopamine floods your brain. Norepinephrine speeds up the heart rate, muscle tension, respiration. You get excited. Increased arousal. Endorphins. Uh, rooting from the word endogenous, meaning naturally internal to the body. Endorphins relieve pain. Endogenous, they didn't put the other word there. Endorphins is endogenous morphine, right? Endorphins are very close in the molecular structure to morphine, which is derived from the poppy, which heroin comes from, and endamide, stemming from the Sanskrit word for bliss. That's also an endogenous cannabaloid, so it means, you know, you're producing THC, psychoactive effect found in marijuana. Interesting. When it's released in exercise, it induces flow states, elevated mood, relieves pain, dilates blood vessels, amplifies lateral thinking, serotonin at the end of a flow state, serotonin fills the brain with an afterglow. And these are just the five that they know about. I'm sure there will be more, but this is it. This is the state, what all that stuff means. All the neuroscience and the brainwave and trauma frequencies and the borderline state and all the chemicals, by neurochemicals flowing, all of that f is to achieve this place, this place in yourself that's open. The universe can flow through this opening and sort of take over. Your best stuff comes when you're in this state. Present moment is the only moment available to us and it is the door to all moments. Do not dwell on the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. The normal functions of the brain, right, left hemispheres, and how they communicate with each other to solve problems and do things, task-oriented things, is released into this flow where all of it magically comes together. All the puzzle pieces fall into place and some door opens up and something big and immense and powerful that's deeply associated with you and your true talents steps through that doorway and takes control and makes something magical happen. That afterwards, you know, I go running for my headphones so I can listen to what came out, to what happened. So I can listen to the soundtrack that's happened. Um, I'm just as much of a fan. So it's this immense place that you can go, that you can be, where something magical between you and the universe is taking place. And it can be exercised.